Hello YouTubers, welcome to that View from the Stage. Today we're going to be going over Mother Love Bone and what kind of effect did they have on modern music and did they even matter at all? Next time View from the Stage. And if you could please like and subscribe to this channel, I'm going to have a ton of content coming out really, really soon. So if you like and subscribe, you'll be updated as soon as it comes out. Also, yes, I am back to my normal filming setting. I was in Orlando for a couple of weeks with my girlfriend, so that's why I had the crazy video with me really close up to the camera. So, getting on with it, Mother Love Bone. Mother Love Bone was one of those bands that was integral to the developing Seattle sound. Everything they did on just one album would contribute to decades, and that's not an exaggeration, decades, of what was about to come. Heroin would delay this generational shift as so often happened in the late 80s and early 90s. Andrew Wood, whose rather short life was taken by addiction, was on the precipice of something huge, but he would never live to see it. Mother Love Bone was founded from the ashes of Malfunction in Green River, with Stone Gosser, Jeff Ahmet, and Bruce Fairweather joining up in a cover band called Lords of the Wasteland. They would eventually get a new drummer as Reagan Hagar left the band and they replaced him with Greg Gilmore. The self-proclaimed half-assed monkey boy, Wood, had big dreams. Starting from an early age, he and his brother started playing Kiss records and playing Paul Stanley and Ace Frehley. Kiss would go on to have a pretty big influence on Wood as he wore tons of makeup in his earliest shows with Malfunction. He would go on to become a charismatic frontman and producer and fellow musician Jack Endino called him the only stand-up comedian frontman in Seattle. Not to take away from the others' contributions, such as Stone, Bruce, Jeff, and Greg, all contributed in some form or fashion to the whole thing. From Stone and Bruce's grinding but smooth guitars, to Jeff's unmistakable and rolling bass lines, to Greg's fury on the drums, they all had an integral part in making up Mother Love Bone. What Mother Love Bone was so successful at doing was bridging the gap between the late 80s glam scene, and also the 90s grunge scene. It was a very, very interesting mix of those two genres that made for some very, very interesting music. And you also have to think about music scene in general at that point. It was before Nirvana, it was before really anything. I mean, Nirvana was current to them, but it was a lot different of an experience when you think about that that wasn't really a thing at that point. And perhaps their greatest crowning achievement is the song Chloe Dancer, Crown of Thorns. It's a ballad, it's an epic, epic ballad that kind of starts at one end and then grows and grows and grows and turns into this anthemic song. And that was the height of Andrew Wood's creative output. Sure, in Seattle, and in the year 1990, you had bands such as Soundgarden, you had bands like Alice in Chains. Uh, Alice in Chains released their album just shortly after Mother Love Bone did. Chris Cornell was Andrew Wood's roommate for the better part of three years. And it really affected Chris Cornell when Andrew Wood died. Um, the band Temple of the Dog is a loose reference to a song that Mother Love Bone did called Man of Golden Words, where he says that, you know, I'm living in the temple of the dog. I think that's really interesting. And this Mother Love Bone thing, it kind of, as far as me as a guitar player, it influenced me a lot in songwriting. I mean, I don't think that I would have ever, I would have never been able to write anything that I've written if it weren't for Mother Love Bone. It's kind of strange to think about it, but. I just, I wouldn't have been who I am today. And in that, in that regard, I feel like that Mother Love Bone did really influence the punk and emo scene a little bit. Um, because without that band, you wouldn't have had any of the bands that came out of Seattle, including Sunny Day Real Estate. That band was from Seattle. That's not a, that's not a coincidence, I don't think. So, again, this is just one guy's opinion. I mean, do you have a favorite Mother Love Bone song? Do you have any memories associated with that band or that time? Let me know in the comments. It's still very astounding to me that 
one band can make that much of a difference through one and a half albums. I think that that is remarkable and it's something that maybe we should revisit uh, at some point. If you haven't listened to Mother Love Bone in a while, I would highly suggest that you do it. Apple is their album and it's fantastic from start to finish. So thanks so much. Uh, thank you for watching A View From The Stage. And make sure, again, you like and subscribe to this channel. And be well.